We're going to explore other properties of matrices that are going to help us solve matrix equations, including the zero and identity matrices, and being able to find the determinant and inverse of a square matrix. This session is going to be focused on the zero and identity matrices. So let's start by looking at good old zero. The zero property of any operation is the effect that zero has on the operation. And it may seem like a simple idea, but it actually turns out to be pretty important in some cases. So the zero property of multiplication, which is also known as the zero product property, has to do with what happens when we take a number, let's say A, and we multiply it by zero. What do we get? Well, the result is always zero. And that turns out to be a pretty crucial thing when it comes to things like factoring, finding the zeros, the, inter the x-intercepts or the horizontal intercepts of a function. The zero property of addition in a similar way is what happens if we add the number zero to a number A. Well, the result of the zero product property for multiplication is zero. The result of adding zero to something or, or subtracting results in the original number A. So then the next question is how does this apply to matrices? What indeed would be a zero matrix? Well, let's define a zero matrix as a matrix where all the elements are equal to zero. And if we do that, for example, with a two by two matrix, and let's call it matrix Z for zero, the zero and two by two matrix would be a two by two matrix where all the elements were zero. So then the next question becomes, okay, if we define that matrix as zero, that zero matrix as an, a matrix with all the elements being zero, and we have another matrix, let's call it A, and let's assume we can add, subtract, or multiply these two matrices, meaning that they have to have the correct number of elements for the operation. So if we can add and subtract them, what's the result? So let's look at matrix addition and subtraction. Well, if we add the zero or subtract the zero matrix to any matrix, we're going to get the original matrix, which is nice because it matches up with number addition and subtraction. So for matrix, the matrix zero property of addition or subtraction is when we add or subtract the zero matrix, we wind up with the original matrix we started with. So let's look at matrix multiplication. If we have a matrix A and a matrix Z and we multiply them, we get one times zero plus two times zero, or one times zero plus two times zero, and, and so on and so on, and we wind up with a zero matrix. So this also matches up with number multiplication. When we multiply a matrix by the zero matrix, we get the zero matrix. Just like any number times zero is zero. Let's look at identity properties. And we have to define the word identity first. And if your identity is yourself, the identity of a number is the number itself. And so an identity property will be something we could do to perform that operation on a quantity and have the result be the original quantity. So, for example, for multiplication, the identity property of multiplication would be what number can we multiply a number by itself to get itself. And for multiplication, that's 1. A times any number A times 1 is always going to give you A. For addition and subtraction, the identity property means that when we add 0 to them or subtract 0 from them, we result in the original number. So another way to say this is the multiplicative identity is 1 because any number times 1 results in the original number. The additive or subtractive identity is 0 because any number, when we add or subtract 0 from it, we wind up with the original number. So that begs the question, what's an identity matrix for multiplication? And you might, we're going to be tempted to go ahead and start off and say, okay, for two by two, that would be a matrix with all the elements being one. Since the zero matrix has all elements that are zero, maybe we would think that the identity matrix would have all the elements being one. Well, let's see if that holds true. And we're going to focus on the identity matrix for multiplication, so the multiplicative identity matrix. 
So in our quest for what the identity matrix is, we have to find an identity matrix, let's call it I, where matrix A times that identity matrix results in the original matrix A. Let's go back to our original assumption of A being one, two, three, four, and we're gonna assume, you know, because our intuition tells us that identity matrix ought to be filled with ones. Well, if we multiply A times a matrix filled with ones, unfortunately, we don't get the original matrix. We get one times one plus two times one is three, and so on, and we get three, three, seven, seven, which is certainly not our original matrix. So, unfortunately, we have to put a big red X on the identity matrix being filled with ones. What can we do? In the first column, the first item is what we need. In the second column, the second item is what we need. And we really would like to just get rid of these elements here. So how could we possibly do that? Well, we could do that by putting zeros in the identity matrix at these points right here. Okay, so one, 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 one doesn't work as an identity matrix, but if we replaced a couple of those ones with zeros, specifically row one, column two, and row two, column one, we will wind up with the original matrix because these parts cancel out and we're just left with the original elements. So let's clean this up so that it looks better. So if we replace this I with the correct identity matrix where one is along the main diagonal and zeros are everywhere else, and we multiply A times I, we get what we expected. We get the original matrix A because the zeros cancel out the parts we don't want and we're left with the original elements. So the identity matrix is got ones in the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And by the way, this is going to work with any square matrix where the number of rows and columns is equal. If it's a 50 by 50 matrix, it's got 50 ones all in that main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This works for any square matrix. The identity matrix always has ones in the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So we'll close this segment with a summary of the properties we've learned about the zero and identity matrices. The zero matrix has zero in all elements, and we can add or subtract that zero matrix to another matrix and get the original matrix. We can multiply it by the original matrix to get another matrix with zeros, provided we can add, subtract, or multiply those two matrices. And finally, the identity matrix works only on square matrices, and that is the matrix with one in the main diagonal, such that when we multiply a matrix A by that identity matrix, we wind up with the original matrix. That's your introduction to the zero and identity matrices. We're gonna to get to inverses and determinants next, all with the hopes of solving matrix equations.